Well, that's no good. It's uh, second day after the shot and I'm gonna see the doctors. I'm now officially homeless. <laughs> well, that's not good. This is amazing. This is it. It's it's empty. By the way, uh, the glasses are just because it's swollen shut still from the Pfizer vaccine, but still get your vaccine. I am so excited. This is like the last day having a, a real address. Uh, so lots of little odds and ends to take care of. Got to take the old bike, put on the rack, take care of recycling, Take care of shredding, safety deposit box, all the little stuff. And then, it's real. <laughs> but I'm gonna take the opportunity while I'm here, at the very end, in classic jury fashion, and say, but first. I'm gonna take a 20 minute shower. Like, I might even take a 30 minute shower. I'm not taking you for that. Morning. Ah, coffee talk. It's been my first night as a real nomad. No address to go back to. Um, here in a familiar place, tides on its way out, Point Malate. This place used to be, uh, uh, well actually at one point, uh, it was like the, the North America's largest wine export hub and then Prohibition kind of squashed that and then the Navy took it over and so now it's a decommissioned naval base. Uh, and also great little overlanding, boondocking, quiet spot in the bay. I uh, still looking pretty bad, so sunglasses it is. In any event, wow, I wouldn't think anything would be different considering that for the last five months I've spent two thirds of my time living in the peanut here, the van, and uh, yeah, no, it, it feels, it feels good. I feel lighter. I feel freer. Um, I feel more peaceful. And I, I gotta say, I'm really content with the decision because you know sometimes you don't know how you're gonna feel about something until you like do it. And it's usually only the things that I don't do that I regret. But I'm just so happy that I absolutely don't regret this. And um, yeah, it it made me start thinking about the times that I've kind of like broken out of that comfort zone. It's like, you know, this is where you normally live, but like here's where the good stuff usually lies. And that, a lot of that takes courage. And I thought about how, and I don't know if you can relate, but sometimes I hear this like inner voice that's almost like Coach Darren, right? And it's, it's like almost as if like talking to a friend, if your friend was like, Hey, I got this opportunity. I got this email and they want me to keynote this conference in, in Australia. And you know, I don't, I don't know. What do you think I should do? And of course you'd be like, yeah, go and do that. That sounds awesome. You're not thinking I have to do that. That sounds like a lot of responsibility. Cybersecurity conference, uh, you know, premier one for our nation. Like, um, but so you just sign him up for it and then you realize you have to do it so you know <laughs> be your best friend <laughs> all right today's plan we are doing some upgrades to the van in terms of security adding a few more of these guys i've got one temporarily set up and i was grateful to have it last night night vision to be able to see what was going on like i said this is a spot that's uh mostly unknown. I hope I'm not popularizing too much by saying this. You won't find it on iOverlander, but clearly, uh, you know, clearly some of the high school kids know and hey, that's cool. Play some music at night. It's definitely uh, a good spot for that. But um, we're going to get full coverage now. 360 around the van. Let's do it.
Okay, so IP cameras, also welcome to the backyard. Um, there are a couple of things that if you're a hacker like me, you're going to want to know when installing IP cameras, whether it's on a rig like this or even at home, because we are living in a world of IoT that is just garbage. And there are so many different options on the market. So let me just run through some of the four primary things that you're gonna to wanna to think about when looking into IP cameras as a hacker. Uh, so you've got features, power, connectivity, and protocols. As far as the features are concerned, it really depends on your application. Uh, you can get ones that are really fancy globes with pan, tilt, zoom, or PTZ, uh, where you can kind of move the camera around from a web interface, zoom in and out. That's a lot of fun. That's not necessary for my application. I do prefer night vision, obviously. At night, that's kind of great. That's typically done with infrared and the camera will shine a bunch of infrared light and then you know see that and it's not visible to the human eye, but the camera can see it and hooray, everybody's happy. Otherwise, one of the key features that I was looking for was also a built-in DVR or digital video recorder. So uh, this unit here, each individual camera, I can pop a you know big 128 gig SD card in and Bob's your uncle ends up on there. Now, this really varies because sometimes you get something nice that's H.264 encoded or you know MPEG encoded. This gives me like a transport stream file. It's not great, but it's something and it's on camera because one is none, two is one. We're also going to set up a DVR over the network. So that brings us to connectivity. Now there are, you know, we're, we're living in such a world where people consider like Wi-Fi the internet, which is great for us hackers, but at the same time, um, it means that a, a vast majority of these that you're gonna find are like Wi-Fi equipped at some level. So this little camera here comes with an aerial and uh, is Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz only. Most IoT stuff is 2.4 gigahertz only, which is, and fire up a pineapple and watch every piece of IoT trash connect to it. But in any event, uh, that tends to be the case. However, uh, in addition to uh, the old Wi-Fi, we actually get a nice little RJ45 Ethernet. So Ethernet and Wi-Fi are the primary connectivity you're gonna find on these guys. Uh, and sometimes you'll find LTE, that's a very specialized use case, uh, but it's nice to know. And actually we've got LTE for the backhaul through uh, our hacked router. So, you know, they're all going to eventually end up on the internet. Uh, but what's, what's important for me is that it's local. Okay, so yes, it may end up on the internet because oh, I'm gonna share this adventure with you guys and it's cool that I've got 360 uh, views around the van, but um, from the connectivity uh, standpoint, we wanna talk about protocols because this is where IoT, it just gets terrible because you see all of these things that are like, oh, integrated with Google Home, integrated with you know Amazon Alexa and all of these other, you know, uh, all this other junk. And at the end of the day, unless you wanna waste your bandwidth having all of the imagery from your camera going up into the cloud, into God knows whose server, back down to you, uh, a waste of bandwidth, a viol you know, a potential privacy issue. I mean, just go to, you know, a, a database like Shodan, actually, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, and you don't wanna expose yourself, right? So I, personally tend to stay away from your kind of mainstream nest cams and and the the like that are while very simple turnkey solutions they're not really my speed because i don't want to be relying on somebody else's infrastructure and also you know for me the primary purpose of this is so that in the middle of the night i can just look at my phone and get a 360 degree view of what's going on you know, around the van. So if I hear a, a noise in the middle of the night, I can find out what it is, Some, you know, raccoon bandits. Because I don't know, maybe you'll find those around Joshua Tree. In any event, um, when it comes to the connectivity, locally speaking, there's two protocols or suites, I guess you should say, that you're, you're gonna want to look for in a camera. RTSP, which is your real-time streaming protocol, and ONVIF, which is actually not a protocol in of itself, but it's a, a forum. It's the Open Network Video Infrastructure Forum or Interface Forum. So think of them as like the USB IF, but for IP cameras. And they basically 
came up with a suite of different like feature sets and uh, classes. And so they can say like, oh, this device meets this criteria or that criteria for these feature set. And there's a protocol involved that makes it pretty seamless for connecting, you know, uh, a lot of different networked IP camera stuff together. Um, and so it's just good to know that if it does support ONVIF, then it, then at the end of the day, it's probably going to support RTSP, which is really what I care about. The real-time streaming protocol is something that is standard and beautiful, and you can fire up your favorite uh, video player like VLC, open a network stream, plug in the URL, and Bob's your uncle. Uh, so the rest of the connectivity is whoever's cloud. Again, this is just, you know, a, a cheap camera off Amazon from China. So I'm not going to be using that cloud infrastructure because it's just not my bag. Uh, and then lastly, power. Uh, so there are the three primary options that you see are 12 volt, very simple DC 12 volt, can't, can't go wrong with that. Uh, and that's what I will be using with these cams because that's, you know, what I get naturally off the batteries. Uh, the other would be solar. Uh, I've seen a lot of nice systems that have like integrated solar. So that's something where you don't even have to think about it if you're in a sunbelt state at least. And uh, PoE or power over ethernet, which we actually did that at the warehouse and it worked great, but it does require a little bit more infrastructure. I don't think it's really applicable to the van here. Uh, so while I'm going to just go ahead and start off using the Wi-Fi for the backhaul, see how that goes. I know I'm allowing the van to be susceptible to deauth attacks. Hopefully those badgers and raccoons and Joshua tree, actually it'd be more like those kangaroo mice we saw. In any event, um, hopefully they don't have deauthers, but uh, yeah, it's good to know that it could switch over to ethernet. So PoE, that's an option. And those are the basic things that you kind of want to think about when looking for cameras. I just got whatever was cheap and available. Um, I will throw a link below. I, it's not my affiliate. You know what? I'll use Glitch as affiliate link. There. I think you're supposed to disclose that. Um, but I'm also really curious what you guys are doing as far as IP uh, cameras and surveillance and things of that nature for your domicile, be it, you know, four-wheeled or um, foundationed. In any event, let's get installing. <laughs> That's not good. Outside of an RG6 that needs another SMA crimped on, we got it going. And this is awesome because I now have 360 coverage and I can watch from anywhere on the local network over Wi-Fi. I will say if I do this again, I will consider perhaps going RJ45 or I think down the line, I'm probably gonna end up going RJ45 just because I don't wanna to have to deal with Wi-Fi as much as I love Wi-Fi. Uh, although I've gotta choose between running four ethernet cables into the van, which means four more protrusions or find a weatherproof outdoor switch. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Let me know if that's a thing. One thing I will note is I did have to replace one of these and that's my fault order of operations is critical and this applies to not just IP cameras but any Wi-Fi gear that has an external antenna. The thing is plug the antenna in first, screw it on before you power it up because when the little Wi-Fi sock in here starts transmitting it could very easily burn out the radio and that's exactly what happened to one of these guys on the roof. So now I've got a fifth that's ethernet only essentially and I'm sure I'll put it to good use. There we go. 
Let's play the game, how many holes can we put in the roof? Wow, finding a spot is going to be a lot trickier than I thought. We might have to forge a new path. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.